In the immortal words of Mr. Burns, ever since the beginning of time, man has wished to destroy the sun. Your days are numbered, sun. But supervillains, being the practical folks they are, know that a more worthy goal will be to destroy the moon, or at least to face it horribly. Nothing wrecks a beautiful night sky like that hideous pockmarked spotlight. What would it take to destroy it and eliminate the enemy of stellar astronomy for all time? Now crack out your Acme brand blueprint paper and white pencils. It's Wiley Coyote time. Now the energy it takes to dismantle a gravitationally held object is known as its binding energy. And we talked about it in a Death Star episode and the inventive ways to overcome it. Like for example, the binding energy of the Earth is 2.2 times 10 to the 32 joules. It's a lot. The binding energy of a smaller object, like our own moon, is a tidy little 1.2 times 10 to the 29 joules. So it takes about 1800 more times more energy to destroy the Earth than it takes to destroy the moon. It's 1800 times easier. That's downright doable, isn't it? That's almost 2000 times easier, which on the scale of easy to less easy, is definitely closer to easy. So consider the event that created the Caloris Basin on Mercury. It's a crater. 1,500 kilometers across. Astronomers think that a big fat asteroid, uh, a fat asteroid, around 100 kilometers in diameter, crashed into Mercury billions of years ago. And this event released 1.3 times 10 to the 26 joules of energy, carving out this giant pit. It's a thousandth of the binding energy of the moon. So we'll need something more. Our sun, produces 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules of energy every second. The equivalent of about a billion hydrogen bombs. So if you directed the full power of the sun at the moon for 15 minutes, it'd tear apart. That's quite a super weapon you've got there. Perhaps you'll want to mount that on a space station and take it for a cruise through a galaxy far, far away. And if the scene took that long, we'd have fallen asleep. It's as if millions of voices gradually became a little hoarse from crying out for a quarter of an hour. There's another way you could tear the moon apart that doesn't require an astral gate accident. Gravity. Astronomers use the Roche limit to calculate how close an object, like a moon, can orbit another object, like a planet. This is the point where the difference between the tidal forces on the front and backside are large enough that the object is torn apart. And if this sounds familiar, you might want to look up spaghettification. So this is all based on the radius of the planet and the density of the planet and moon. If the moon got close enough to the Earth, around 18,000 kilometers, it would pull apart and be shredded into a beautiful ring. And then the objects in the ring would enter the Earth's atmosphere and rain down beautiful destruction for thousands of years. Fortunately, or unfortunately, on, depending on your position in this die, moon, die discussion, the moon is drifting away from the Earth. It'll never be closer than it is right now at almost 400,000 kilometers without a little nudge. Phobos, the largest moon orbiting Mars, is slowly approaching the planet, and astronomers think it'll reach the Roche limit in the next few million years. So it turns out that if we really want to destroy the moon, we'll need to destroy all life on Earth as well. Well, now we know your new supervillain project. So what's your supervillain name? Tell us your handle in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Sebastian Stabinger and Rick Stankiewicz and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. And we'd like to thank Sebastian Stavanger and Rick Stankowicz. And <laughs> it's his name. Fuck it. <laughs> well, we got it. It's in the can. And we got to go back and do it again. Oh.